altogether different test. That is a fine start for Michael Green. A score inside the opening 10 seconds. Connors is being held up here, gets the flick across. That's beautiful shot. Oh, what a goal! What a goal for Patrick Bonner who finishes it in the end. And this is the thing with Tabrari, they'll dazzle you with their skill lead. Launching this one in, it might break inside. The flick and it's into the net. Graham Mulcahy doing what Graham Mulcahy does best. How influential is that guy in this Limerick team? Aaron Gallant. Gallant under a bit of pressure. Gallant from this near stand side. That would be a super score. Oh, that is an absolutely brilliant score from Aaron Gallant. Referee has said that is that. Limerick have gotten the victory. Yes, a great game in Gaelic grounds last Saturday. Limerick eventually running out seven-point winners to hand Liam Sheedy his first defeat. Wexford beat Cork in challenging conditions for their first win of the campaign. While Clare hung on to beat Kilkenny on Sunday, a fourth successive league victory over Brian Cody's side. Meanwhile, in Division 1B, Dublin and Waterford both secured big wins over Offaly and Leash, respectively. While we have already discussed that momentous draw for Carlo against Galway. So guys, I mean, we, we, we speak a lot about what's needed to win All-Ireland. I suppose it is very early stages in the year. But for yourselves, what are your, your favourite moments you think about All-Ireland finals? Shane? Uh, listen, I, I, I don't have as much experience. Combined All-Irelands of, of, uh, of five, you're doing the heavy list, lifting here. <laughs> there. A lot of the heavy lifting. But uh, to, for me, for me, it's the, like, it, the defining moment for me in Crow Park was obviously having my family on the field. It was amazing. Um, it made it made an awful lot of I suppose the 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 sacrifice you make off the field you, you, to bring it onto the field it was is incredible. But the the confetti, it's really cliche. But uh, really? when the confetti came down in Crow Park, I've watched countless teams standing under that, and the gold streamers came down in Crow Park, and uh, my daughter was running around with one of them, and mm. she took it home. So like you know these are the things, and these are the small things, and then like the cranberries coming on over the PA in uh, Crow Park, the whole of Limerick remembers that more than the, than Declan lifting the cup. So yeah, these are the small moments on our final day. Yeah, but nonetheless extremely important. Kira, what about you? What are the standout moments and memories? Um, I think f for me, like to win, to even think about winning an All-Ireland medal when I was 19 or 20 just wasn't in my head. I, uh, you know, I don't know where you were in your, in your careers on the way up, but I was never the guy. I was always a sober kind of a role player at that time. But... For me, sitting down on, on, on the bed in the Burlington uh, the night after we won our first all Ireland medal and I was sitting there putting on the shoes and we're getting ready to go down to the banquet. And that time, I was, we were talking about it earlier on, like when you won an All-Ireland, they were on you. Yes. I remember I got my face reefed by some fellas watch hugging me, giving me a headlock. <laughs> and when I planned the aftershave that night, I was like, <laughs> I was like Macaulay Culkin and holding on. <laughs> so um, I think you're sitting down in the bed, getting ready to go downstairs, it just kind of hit me. Hillary was pottering around the room getting ready. I was after putting on the shoes and I just lied back in the bed and I was just like, I'm after winning an All-Ireland medal. Yeah. And I'm after winning it with Seamus Moynihan and Dara O'Shea, fellas that I'd watched since I was a youngster. And I think I said to her, like, you know, I'm going to be on a wall in some mm -hmm. pub in Kerry in 30 or 40 years and who would have thought it? So that for me was, was, was a very special moment because it was just, it was the two of us, it was me, it was away from the madness that had just mm -hmm. ensued and I was just getting ready to go down to more madness, which yeah. is the banquet at the time. Um, so yeah, that was that was probably one of my favourite moments. It's a fairly cluttered wall on that. Uh, yeah, I was carry, say, you need to put on an extension. <laughs> at, least, at, least, at least I'll have some sort of space on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually remember for me, it was the Monday morning, it was the, that, you know, when you open your eyes and for those first few seconds, because I've been on plenty of, of times of sides where it's like you, you'd feel that gutting feeling of losing. Yeah. But just those moments, that elation, and you said you're lying there, probably no one around you would be like, oh my God, you know, Thanks we did it. Thanks God, you yeah. roll over and you see all the fat frogs in the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, there's a different show now, a different show. And even like, I mean, you've, you've met so many players, I mean, and you, you know, you hear about all the, the talk about defining moments as well. You know, and, and often teams, you know, Limerick had it against Galway. Is there any standout moments for you in teams down to the years? Has there been that defining moment that you knew they could they could take this title. Yeah, I suppose especially when you're when you're up in the press box in Crow Park, it's kind of a it's a very different. It's obviously very different than being on the field, but it's also very different than being in the in with the fans. You know, you don't have the celebration or the, you know, the disappointment for the whole way through, and then obviously at the end. 
But in terms of moments, yeah, like, uh, you know, you can't, you can't really look past 2012 where we won the most emotional finals when you had Donegal coming through and, 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 and Mayo and the neutrals didn't really know who to support. Uh, Micheál Murphy's goal. Um, I think of Michael Darren McCauley diving out on top, on top of a ball. Kieran won't want to think about it. Um, mm. And flicking it on. Conor Gormley's blocks. You know, the game is, 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 um, is made up of, like, the small moments for the winners, but... It, it's also, we were talking before, it's made up of the small moments for the losers as well, Seamus. Mm. Mm. Uh, but it, it, it's, the margins are so incredibly mm -hmm. fine. And the, the margins for success, like the, the uh, Richie Hogan's goal for Kilkenny in the last five minutes for, against us last year, it was Tom Morrissey catching a puck out, or you could say the, mm -hmm. the, the year could have been over. So they're that kind of margins. And I think of, like when I think of teams then trying to make the breakthrough, I'm thinking of Watford uh, two years ago against, against Kilkenny mm -hmm. in the All-Ireland semi-final. You know, a team that was... They were playing such exceptional hurling, and you would felt like they were they had to beat Kilkenny if they were going to win the All Ireland. Uh, and there was th there was three instances Wise. in the second half: Kevin Moran, uh, Austin Gleeson, Wise, and heartbreak. Like that's the margin. Like, uh, and the replay, the, it didn't go their way, and uh, Kilkenny won the All Ireland. I suppose so. that's the beauty of sport: is so that it's always unpredictable. It, you know, it's never it, over till it's, it's a, over. It, it's so fine and. The, the victors, you know, write the history. Well, you know what? Plenty of people today were obviously really intrigued about this chat and, th and they've sent in loads of questions to any of this, so I think we have to give a shout out to them too. So, Kieran, this is a, an interesting question for you now. So, uh, this comes in from a guy called Paul Ganey. I, I, it's not Paul Ganey, you're Paul Ganey now. <laughs> Does Kieran think that Emma Fitzmaurice stayed on too long and was too loyal to senior players? Um. Uh, Tough no, question. no, I don't think he. No, I don't think he was. I think Eamon, every player wanted Eamon to stay on again this year. You know, mm -hmm. e Eamon's decision was very much based around public opinion, and you know, Eamon to the players was was everything. You know, the mm -hmm. players would have would have died for Eamon, and they were really followed him. They would have followed him to the end of the earth. Um, too loyal to the older players. I don't think he was. You know, I, you know, he he, he there, was, there was times at, at games last year where. You know, there was the Galway game where me and Darren Sullivan didn't get on, so he wasn't too loyal to his mm -hmm. old servants at that mm -hmm. stage. Um, you know, he started me against Monaghan, um, didn't play particularly well. I think he actually stayed loyal to me in that game, and it was to our benefit late on. But I remember that coming up to him after that game going, she's a fair play to because I would have taken me off because I wasn't <laughs> doing too great. Um, David Clifford bailed us out of it in the end, but... I don't think he was, no. Yeah, and I suppose, as you said, it's, it, you have to make the tough calls as a manager. Yeah, One way or another, someone's going to yeah, have an opinion. young or old, you're going to have to make tough calls. I think, I think continuity is one of the best things. I craved continuity in Limerick, and we, I had seven different managers in, in nearly 10 years. Uh, you, you, continuity is, 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 is something you know, it's something familiar, it's comfortable. As soon as you change, and you could change to the greatest thing coming up, like, uh, but there's no certainty there. Mm -hmm. You don't know how it's going to turn out. And I've been part of teams where, where successful young lads have been in, introduced ahead of uh, guys who you know their form, you know their history, and they have experience. And it, it probably didn't work out. So it, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, but I, just, I thought Eamon, Eamon did an incredible job in Kerry when he was there. Yeah, well, there's another one in here now, because speaking of David Clifford, Eamon, I'm going to go to you from um, Jaden Tynan. Right now, Sean O'Shea or David Clifford? Um, uh, David Clifford. Sean O'Shea, is, he's been carrying Kerry at the moment. Um, his free taking is, is incredible. Um, in terms of general play, you know, Clifford has has the two, and um, yeah, like he's a complete superstar. He has absolutely everything, Clifford, really. And um, even in terms of being the marked man last year for Kerry, he's shown that, you know, against Monaghan when they were dragging out of him, you've seen that bit of bite from him. Yeah. We Sean O'Shea played very well for Kerry last year as well, but he wasn't kind of carrying that same burden. Um, so we don't really know if he has that full extent of the next level. So for me, it, it would be Clifford, but. Um, the two of them are incredible, are incredible talents to have coming through. Yeah, I suppose I was asking you a tough question <laughs> there now, but I said I'd throw it at you. OK, so there's a very interesting one here from George Ford, and he said that, you know, he would love to get your insight and to talk, talk us through the day of a big game. You know, what's it like in terms of the atmosphere, even the superstitions, you know, the, the different teammates and their rituals, you know, each of you have your different experiences. So give us a brief synopsis. Question. Eating, eating chicken and pasta at 11 o'clock in the morning when you're playing in Crow Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the first downer, anyway. I can tell you that much. Um, it can only go up from there, but um, yeah, everybody has their superstitions. I think, you know, the bigger the, 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 bigger the game, you're, you're, you're quite nervous, but I think you're in your environment, you're in with your guys. Um, you kind of keep each other sane and calm. Um, and you'll be, you'll be 
concentrating and distracting fellas. You'll be yeah. talking about all types of stuff. So just might just get a fella's head off the yeah. game for because it's the first thing you it's the last thing you think of going to sleep, it's the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning. So, you know, it's 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 not healthy to be thinking about yeah. it all throughout. You have to break it up a bit. You actually crave, especially on match day, to actually get in to the to the yeah. team environment. Because then you're out of the the, ma the mainstream and and people talking and wishing you well. Sometimes it's the most distracting thing is people and like they mean the very best, but it's like oh best luck today and like they've no idea what it's doing to your to your to your own like how you're processing the game in your head and what you're thinking about. Um, you know, it, it actually takes a good bit of training, a bit of experience to actually handle that. Some people love talk, going on about it and love engaging with people. Shane Downing was excellent in Limerick. He loved talking to people. He talked to people in the pharmacy about games all day long, not about or go over and slot over 11 points in the, on the Sunday. But other people didn't go into their shell. So it, it depends. I loved, yeah. I loved it on the team bus, headphones on, and uh, watching the crowd. Getting ready to go. Yeah. yeah, I know. And I have forever the taste of chicken and pasta in my mouth. I'm <laughs> sure that'll, that'll never go. Thanks very much, guys. Well, that's about it for this week on Allianz Leagues Reloaded. Just a chance to remind you that Kerry against Dublin is live in Airsport 1 this Saturday. Damien and the guys will be building up to that massive game from 6pm. And we'll also have live coverage of Mayo versus Cavan, which throws in at 7pm in the Kale Park. That is live in Airsport 2. And if you're on the Sky platform, it's available on either Channel 422 or 871, depending on your Skybox. And we'll be back next week at the usual time of 7 p.m. My thanks to Kieran Donahue, Seamus Hickey, and Eamon Donahue for their insights and for the crack. And thank you all at home for watching. See you again next week.